Hello bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees. Uh, today I'm going to talk a bit about laying workers um, because I've got a nuke that has gone to laying workers. So first of all, what are laying workers? Why do they happen? How can you avoid it? That kind of thing. Um, laying workers are kind of a last ditch effort for uh, the spread of genetics when a hive's uh, buildup has gone you know, catastrophically wrong. After they've become hopelessly queenless, um, for some period of time, the workers uh, develop ovaries, and, or their ovaries develop, and they uh, gain the ability to lay eggs. Those eggs are unfertilized and will always be drones, and you're never going to sustain a colony f with that, or you're, and you're also never going to create a queen with that. But in the evolutionary tactic, um, like I said, it's a last ditch effort for the colony to spread its genetics throughout the local area. So that being said, how do you avoid it? Well, you avoid it by keeping a laying queen in your hive. And if you don't have a laying queen in your hive, adding <coughs> open milk brood periodically. Um, so how did this hive get laying workers? That was a walkaway split about a month ago what my guess is is that the queen took off the virgin queen took off to get mated it's probably eaten by a bird or a dragonfly or something didn't come back and so like i said after that period of the absence of queen pheromone and open brood pheromone those bees uh become laying workers like i said their their ovaries develop now how can you tell if you have laying workers the, uh, the short answer is many eggs in a cell, in each cell. Um, now, it shouldn't be confused with an early mated queen. After a queen is uh, freshly mated, she may lay multiple eggs in each cell for a while. Uh, so you don't want to do what I'm about to do to this colony if that's a possibility. Now, I have gone through this colony three times over the course of the last week or eight or so days and I am 100% certain that these are laying workers. Uh, another way that you can check or that you can be certain is the amount of eggs. It's not just you know two or three and then it's also on the sides of uh, the cells. Now you won't see that here because these cells aren't drawn out too far. But these are laying workers. So, what to do with them? Well, what I am about to do... Oh, this stupid mount. What I'm about to do is shake these bees out. Uh, I have zero patience for laying workers. You can waste a lot of resources trying to rectify it. So what I'm going to do is take all the frames over there, shake them out, and remove this uh, nuke box from right here. They will drift into these other queen right nukes, and when they start laying eggs in those nukes, uh, the other workers will kill them. So that will boost these uh, nukes population for a while. And if you only have a couple colonies and you're trying to deal with the laying worker situation, um, and I you know, do recommend that you just shake them out in uh, a while, you can split them back uh, and regain your original hive count. Um, another method of dealing with laying workers if you are really, really dead set on rectifying the situation without shaking them out and then splitting again a couple weeks later, is you can add open milk brood. Um, if I were to try to rectify this situation, I would add one frame of open milk brood now and then another in another week along with a queen cell or a mated queen. Um, that would probably work because these are small nukes, but if you have a full hive full of laying workers, um, you may need more iterations than that, and that's where I was. That's what I was meaning when I said you can waste a lot of resources trying to rectify these situations because uh, it's just uh, a difficult thing to deal with, to get rid of in a full-size active colony. 
So here, I've got bees buzzing my face already. Um, I'm gonna start shaking these bees out, or I'm gonna bring all the frames out there. And then I'm gonna shake them out and remove this uh, nuke box from here so that they are forced to drift into these other ones. Okay, I do want to say one more thing before I do this. Uh, I don't want you to misconceive this and think that I'm shaking them away uh, with the hopes that the laying workers can't fly because that's an absolute misconception. Laying workers can and will fly and if you shake those bees out, um, you know, the laying workers out, they will return 100% of the time if not coupled with another effort like adding milk brood and, and all that kind of stuff. So don't believe that shake them out 200 yards away because the laying workers can't fly because that is a, a misconception, a very widely believed misconception that I don't understand why it still exists because I'm certain these people are shaking these bees and seeing those laying workers return. So you'd think that that would kill that misconception, but it hasn't. So that is not what I'm doing and I don't suggest you try that. Trust me, I've tried it multiple times. It does not work. And I'll give these frames to some other, you know, colonies because I don't want uh, dead or dying brood in this bee yard or any bee yard for that matter. Uh, dead brood, chilled brood can cause European fowl brood and a bunch of other nasty situations. So if you have to do this and you don't have a place to put those uh, frames, scrape them, freeze them, um, do anything but allow them to fester because that, like I said, you'll, you'll uh, quickly get yourself a, a bad case of European fowl brood and you'll spend all year trying to, trying to rectify that. Okay, so now the fun part, shaking bees. Shaking bees is fun, but not necessarily in this particular sense. So. Okay, so now you see crazy situation back here and it will be like that probably for the remainder of the day as the bees try to figure out what's going on and try to politely work their way into some of these other nukes. But uh, so like I said, there are multiple options, multiple d different ways to deal with this situation. This is the quickest and you know most definitive. Uh, like I said, you can waste a lot of resources um, trying to trying to rectify it with milk brood and other stuff from other hives. So I recommend this method. Um, so if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will give you the answer if I know it or find it for you if I don't. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. Get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.